Werewolf Beats Bigfoot. Dear Scary Stories NYC, I saw a fight between a Bigfoot and a werewolf. I mean, I think the one creature was a Bigfoot, and I know the second one was a werewolf, not a dogman. How do I know? Because sometime after that creature bit the Bigfoot, I saw the Bigfoot become sick and transform into a hideous canine version of his former self. How else to explain that, except to say that I think I saw that Sasquatch get turned into a werewolf? I really don't love using those words to describe what I saw, since neither of them really looked at all like what I would have expected a Sasquatch or a werewolf to look like. I just think that must have been what they were, but I'll get into details and try to explain what it is that I was looking at, so that you'll know what I mean when I use those sorts of generic terms. Now, these were very specific creatures, different from what I've seen in movies or on TV. So I was camping with my friend who I will call Jeremy. He and I used to be roommates in college, and we've stayed drinking buddies and occasional camping buddies since then. I've just turned 27, so I guess he and I have been friends since we were both 18. We met as freshmen. Now, this cryptid stuff happened during the pandemic, so what year was that? I don't even remember. It was an election year, probably. So, we were both adults, out of school and working jobs for a few years by this point. Jeremy is the taller of the two of us, and back then he was more athletic. When the gyms were closed during the pandemic, he kind of got out of the habit of exercising him. These days, I'm probably in better shape than he is. But back then, he was still in shape and still confident, and still making good money and dating different women. I hadn't really seen him look scared before, when he came running out of the woods in the late afternoon, saying he had seen a big Sasquatch-looking guy out in the woods, staring at him while he was trying to pee. He told me he couldn't pee once he saw it, and I made a crack about how I'd pee my pants if I saw what he saw. I guess that was rude, but I thought he was joking around. Like I said, I had never seen him look scared before, and he was bigger than me. I thought this was Jeremy putting on his Oh, I'm so scared act. I thought he was pulling my leg to try to get me scared, so I just made fun of him. But it turned out he really meant it. So all of a sudden I was apologizing and Jeremy was getting all emotional, like some emo girl. I'm not trying to be rude, I just want you to understand how surprising this was. Like he went into the woods one person and came out someone else. So as I was apologizing and trying to get my friend to calm down, I began thinking about how scary that thing must have looked if it could turn my big brave friend Jeremy into a blubbering idiot with just one glance. I got the full body shivers from that. And so Jeremy and I started drinking the beers a little early. Why we didn't pack up and try somewhere else, I'm not sure. But we drank some beers and built up a big roaring fire. After we got some food in our bellies, we didn't feel so scared anymore, at least I didn't. When I realized I had to pee, I just got up and wandered away from the fire into the darkness. I wasn't thinking about forest monsters or anything like that at all. I had moved past all that stuff already. But as I was zipping up after doing my duty, I got that feeling of being watched. I looked all around. When I saw red eyes at about 11 o'clock, looking like they were a head or two above me off the ground, I did not think Sasquatch. Honestly, I had first thought Shadow Person because all I saw at first was the dark silhouette and the bright red eyes. But when the dark figure got angry at me staring at it, then it began to charge toward me. And I saw that it was not a flat silhouette at all, but a three-dimensional creature of some sort, and even larger than I had originally thought. I turned and ran toward the four o'clock position when our camp was at six o'clock, so that was a huge mistake on my part to start with. It's a lucky break for you, though, because my idiocy is the only reason I got to witness the stuff that I'm about to recall for you. So I ran through the woods in the dark, pretty wasted if I'm going to be honest and I kept running into tree branches and slipping and falling on my face as I ran. At points I was crawling, and I was a banged up muddy mess almost as soon as the chase through the dark began. All of this on top of the fact that I had no idea where I was running to in the dark woods. 
I could hear that guy behind me growling like an animal. So I didn't feel like turning around and having a conversation with my pursuer was really much of an option, if you know what I mean. I might have started to figure out that this was the Bigfoot that got Jeremy so scared earlier, but I'm not sure my thinking at that time was really as complex as all that. I was just scared for my life. As I was heading toward a clearing that was better lit than where I was, presumably by moonlight since what else was there, I saw another figure in that clearing, directly in front of me. It seemed to be facing in my direction and waiting to intercept me. I thought I was running into a trap, and I suppose I was, but I thought the figure behind me was deliberately chasing me toward the figure in front. I thought they were working in goats, and that I was about to be eaten for a late dinner by whatever these two figures were. This was not actually the case, but it was my instinctual gut reaction at the time, and my nervous system was overruling my conscious mind. I turned to my left at the last second, heading on a parallel course to the edge of the clearing instead of entering it. I was staying in the dark woods, hoping my pursuer would miss what I had done and continue running forward into the clearing. While I was making my getaway to the left, I got my foot hooked under a root and I fell face forward, really wrenching my foot and ankle, bending them in ways God had not intended them to be bent. Nothing was broken, but I was in severe blinding pain for a few seconds, and running was going to be out of the question for at least a few minutes, probably longer. Instead, I got my foot up on a rock and I turned to peer through the vegetation into the clearing. In there, I saw not a shadow man, not a Sasquatch, and not a human, but some kind of a dog-headed man or dogman, I suppose. It was in the clearing waiting for me. That was what I had seen in there ahead of me before I took off to the left. But when my pursuer burst out into the woods, it was not another dog-headed man. It was a big, dark muscle man of a creature, entirely covered in fur. Its eyes were red and this had to have been what chased me. It was not a shadow man because it was three-dimensional, but I wasn't sure what it was. I guess it was ape-like, but not really. It was like a big, hairy man. A sort of a small giant, I guess. Maybe a caveman? It wasn't a human, and it wasn't an ape. So it had to have been a Bigfoot. But I never expected Bigfoot to look quite like this guy. Neither the so-called Sasquatch, nor the, I guess you'd call it a dogman, seemed to have expected the other one. In fact, they both backed away from each other, in an almost comical fashion at first. I'm not sure which one was more scared of the other, but they sure weren't friends or working together. It was clear that the Bigfoot had not intentionally chased me toward that thing. So after initially reacting to each other like Abbott and Costello, their next reaction was not so humorous. The two creatures began circling each other, clearly intending to fight. I was stuck where I was, massaging my foot, and wishing I either had a camera with me, or some means of transportation out of there. It seemed I'd hurt myself right on the borderline between Bigfoot turf and werewolf turf, judging by the attitude both of them were bringing into this fight. It didn't look to me like either one was bluffing, even though they were literally bluffing. I saw the wolf charge the gorilla-looking man, and I saw the Squatch do the same to the wolfman, but it was clear with every movement either one made that they were testing the other, measuring the abilities of their opponent. In that sense, they really weren't bluff charges. They were more like reconnaissance missions and information-gathering expeditions. These were two predators who usually took down herbivores, I would imagine. Everything I have ever heard about this type of situation indicated that predators will avoid violent conflict with each other under nearly all circumstances. I was sitting there watching the exception. I was watching a real Bigfoot and a real Dogman battle. Or so I thought. At first the Squatch scored more direct hits than the Upright Wolf, but I'm not sure he was really able to do much damage. If you think of the creature as a Dogman, that doesn't really make too much sense. But if he was a Werewolf, well, don't they have some kind of healing ability? If we assume this was a werewolf and not a dogman, 
then maybe he was letting the Bigfoot hit him. This way, the Squatch does his worst damage and tires himself out. But the werewolf keeps withdrawing and giving his body time to heal before taking another attack from the Bigfoot. The Sasquatch's attacks were all blunted pummeling, like he sort of punched the wolf at one point, and he backhanded him another time. I saw him grab the wolf and throw him into a tree as well. The wolf mostly darted around and snarled while the Squatch tired himself out. Both creatures spent as much time on two legs as four, attacking each other from left, right, above, and below. It was pretty amazing to see their abilities, but I couldn't forget that this wasn't some kind of athletic display. This was a blood fight, for real. Once the Bigfoot started slowing down a bit, I saw that Wolfman start to finally get serious. But his style of fighting was different from the Sasquatch. The Dogman was all slashing claws and biting jaws. I could tell when the Bigfoot connected by the thudding sound. But I could tell when the Werewolf connected because the Bigfoot would let out a high-pitched yelp, like a dog whose tail you just stepped on. The Werewolf would do these chaotic attacks, sometimes running past the Bigfoot at full speed, then darting away, but other times slashing and biting as he continued to run at full speed. After a few direct hits, the Werewolf seemed to withdraw for longer periods than earlier, watching the Bigfoot, looking for something. What was he looking for? All I know is that when he didn't see it, he ran in for another few anarchistic dive bomb attacks against his larger opponent. After some time, the Bigfoot seemed to be having issues. He was slower to react when the Dogman ran past for one thing, but he also seemed to be having some kind of a problem of some sort. It kind of looked like he was sick. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. He seemed like he was going to vomit, but he didn't. And then he started to have some kind of spasmodic attack, flinging himself all around the clearing and making a horrible racket. He crashed off balance into a tree all the way on my side of the clearing at one point, and I had leaves and branches rained all over me. I almost had an attack of my own when that happened, but the Squatch staggered back over to the other side in a second or two. The werewolf seemed to be expecting all this, and he seemed to be enjoying himself, as far as I could tell. The twitchy, gyrating Bigfoot started to look... different. His snout seemed longer than it had before, and his ears seemed less like those of a monkey than they had before, too. It wouldn't have been something I would have ever even thought about before, but I was seeing the Bigfoot monster become a werewolf version of itself. Its legs looked different, and the changes seemed to be painful to endure, judging by the sounds his werewolf Bigfoot was making. When he dropped to his knees and howled, the werewolf joined him, and the two howled to the heavens for what seemed to my eardrums to be six or seven years, but was probably in actuality only three or four months. I started to shake all over, and I couldn't control it. I still don't know what that was about, but at the time, I thought it was some kind of serious physical problem. I mean, I thought I was going to die, so I laid down and I tried to slow my breathing. It turns out that was a good thing to do because I was probably having a panic attack. Breathing like you're calm will help you get calm again. I didn't know that. I just got lucky. And I kept lying on that cold forest ground trying to calm myself down, focusing on breathing slowly and deeply, when I suddenly noticed that the sky I was staring up at was starting to turn purple and pink. I also realized that I hadn't heard monster noises for a long time, and I started to feel a little more normal again. My foot and ankle were still sore, but I felt a lot less scared in the morning light with no monsters, so I started to hobble and hop back to camp. Jeremy had not noticed I was gone, but he noticed my limp when I came back to camp. I told him it was the Bigfoot who gave me the limp, but now the Bigfoot is a werewolf, and he thought I had eaten some strange mushrooms. I ate some food then went to sleep in my tent. I didn't get up till noonish, and when I did, I told Jeremy we had to pack and leave. 
He still thought I was tripping out, so I had to prove to him that I was just tired, not stoned or whatever. I told him the entire story, and even though he was the one who had seen the Bigfoot first, he acted like he didn't believe my story. I guess Bigfoot seemed real to him, but not werewolves? Or no, it was that he could accept a dogman, but not a werewolf. He says a dogman could be real, but transforming mythical creatures are impossible. Now that's kind of an insulting thing to say to a guy who just saw a Bigfoot transform into a werewolf. Or a were-squatch? A werefoot. Anyway, in the time since then, Jeremy says he's come to accept that I really mean it about this story. And he no longer suspects I was on some weird fungus from outer space or anything. But he has tried to get me to go back to this park to camp on several occasions, and I think he's out of his mind. He says the chances of seeing a cryptid in the same location twice in one lifetime are almost zero. But he keeps forgetting one key fact. I didn't just see a Bigfoot. I saw a werewolf. It was able to turn that squatch into something else. And that means it could do the same to me or to any human as well. I don't personally want to become a werewolf. And I don't want to be camping with Jeremy when he gets turned into a werewolf either. I'd rather spend my time off in places less known for monsters that turn you into monsters. I'm taking my next vacation in my bathtub. I'm hoping my skin doesn't pucker too much, but in either case, it's better than worrying about becoming a cursed, hairy monster. Then give this a look, it'll give you more fright, fright. Scary stories, coloring book, werewolf coloring book. And just to make your mind explode, it's a digital download. All it costs is 209, and then you will be feeling fine. Coloring monsters today, day, it's a coloring book, hooray, okay, link is in the description. Thank you, spell code cover, for all the things you do, we thank you and moreover, we want to say thank you, thank you to our executive producer still, she is the best, hooray. Thanks Biggie. And thanks to all of you for watching this far. If you liked it, please click like. If you'd like to see more of our work, please subscribe. And also click that bell icon if you'd like to be notified when we put out a new episode. To become an executive producer, you can donate to us through the thanks button under each of our videos or through our paypal.me slash peterbernard209 page. To receive cool perks like secret uncensored Dogman episodes far too wild to ever run on this channel, you can become a YouTube channel member by clicking the join button. Or join our PayPal subscribers club at peterbernard.com. Joining either at the $3 a month level or above gets you access to our over 25 hours of secret uncensored Dogman stories available nowhere else. Do you have a scary story about Dogman or some other kind of high strangeness that happened to you? Let us know by emailing us at scarystoriesnyc at gmail.com or by leaving us a voicemail message at 804 LaScary. You may need to call back on that when it cuts off after I think three minutes. And if you don't want to do any of that stuff, thank you for simply watching to the end. Good night, and have a scary tomorrow. Come back, come back for more scary, scary stories. stories.